We all believe that Roman Reigns was going to work the Elimination Chamber PLE in Australia, and a ton of reports were saying that The Rock and Roman Reigns were going to have their long-awaited dream match over there. However, that might not be the case according to some new reports from the Wrestling Observer newsletter. This is what they had to say. Regarding the Reigns and Rock match, while I presume it's WrestleMania and could possibly be a three-way with Rhodes, but I don't think that will come out until many weeks from now. What we did have confirmed is that the Australia rumors aren't accurate. Roman Reigns is not even scheduled for the show. He's never been advertised and there are no plans for him for that date right now. If this report is true, then this would complicate the road to WrestleMania. Because you see, wrestling fans were fine with the idea of Roman Reigns and The Rock taking place at the chamber because it would allow Cody Rhodes to finish his story at WrestleMania. But if he doesn't work the PLE in Australia, then this pretty much changes everything. Everything. We shouldn't worry too much because WWE could always advertise him later. For example, he was never advertised for Money in the Bank until the beginning of his feud with the Usos. With that being said, I think there's a real possibility that he drops the belt to Randy Orton at the Royal Rumble because it would solve a ton of issues. It gives us The Rock and Roman Reigns at WrestleMania without the title, and then it would give Cody Rhodes the ability to finish his story against his longtime friend, and I'm sure they could cook up a great feud in a few months. To me, that seems like a more realistic option than a triple threat match with The Rock, Roman Reigns, and Cody Rhodes, even though I don't think that's a terrible idea. I just don't see WWE booking a triple threat match. Match. I'm sure they want to have The Rock and Roman Reigns battle in a singles match, and they want those to headline WrestleMania alone. The whole situation just got a lot more confusing. Honestly, Triple H has a lot of things to figure out. Good luck. That's all I got to say to Hunter. Good luck, because this is a tough situation and scenario. In other news, there are reportedly going to be a couple of returns set to take place very soon. According to the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, Sheamus and Xavier Woods are going to return within the next few weeks. That is great news. Both men are great, and the WWE is just a better place when they're on TV. I'm going to guess that Sheamus is going to return to his faction, while Xavier Woods is going to return to get retribution for his boy, Kofi Kingston, after he was destroyed on Monday Night Raw. I think a feud between Imperium and The New Day should be a lot of fun, especially after that angle they had on Monday Night Raw. The WWE recently released some R-Truth merchandise with the Judgment Day, and it's been the hottest seller in the last 24 hours. It sold more than CM Punk, Jey Uso, Roman Reigns, and Randy Orton. This is why R-Truth is so goaded. When you put him in a position to succeed, he over-delivers. People just care about him, and I hope they continue this storyline. It clearly has people interested, and they're making money from it. There's no reason for it to come to an end anytime soon. Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits have been together for some time now, and they still don't have a name. Well, that might change because Russell Votes recently came out with a report on the group's new name. This is what they said. There were plans in place to name the Bobby Lashley and Street Profits faction on last week's SmackDown, which got axed at the last second for unknown reasons. I'm told that those plans are still tentative as the direction of the trio could be shifting. The plan name for the group is The Pride. The name was kind of controversial online as some people liked it while others didn't really like it that much. I think it's a pretty decent name. I don't hate it and I think it will grow onto me even more as the weeks go by. I did secretly wish that the Hurt Business was back in business, but I guess we gotta leave that faction name in 2021 because it looks like it's not coming back anytime soon. In a recent interview, CM Punk spoke about Seth Rollins and this is what Punk said about the World Heavyweight Champion. This is why CM Punk thinks Seth Rollins hates him. Hmm, because I've been everywhere he has been, and he hasn't been everywhere I've been. We're probably too similar, that's honestly the biggest thing I can think of, is we're very similar, but the difference is I can talk about my career and not have to mention him, whereas he cannot talk about his career without mentioning me. So I understand where he's coming from. I really understand. I think he's always felt like he was the little brother and I've never tried to treat him that way. I've always tried to treat him like a peer, but some people you just can't reach. He hates me. He hates me like Colorado Avalanche and Red Wings. This feud is going to be so good. I can't wait until WrestleMania 40. These two are going to give us one of the best feuds in a really long time. The storyline is going to be absolutely fire. Bailey was recently asked about AJ Lee and her potential return for the Royal Rumble. Now that CM Punk is back in the WWE, that it's a possibility. And let's listen to what she had to say. I mean, one of the interviews I just had, they brought up AJ Lee since, you know, CM mm. Punk is here. I mean, I wouldn't mind that. 
I mean, I might actually let her throw me over the top rope if she came back. Wow. Okay. That's how much I respect her. That's that's pretty amazing. I think this is a hilarious response from Bailey, but that's Bailey for you. She's hilarious. I still think that AJ Lee returning to WWE is going to happen. I don't know why. I just got a good feeling about it. It would be nice to see AJ Lee, Bailey, Sasha Banks, and Jade Cargill as the final four. But that's definitely asking for way too much. But hey, I dream big. So you know what? That's my final four. I want to see it. I don't care. We have an embarrassing story about Chris Jericho. According to Body Slam Net, he was involved in a fight with MVP on his own cruise in 2020. This is what the report said. During Chris Jericho's Rock and Wrestling Rager back in January of 2020, there was an altercation between Jericho and former WWE US Champion MVP, where there were heated words exchanged that resulted in MVP knocking out Chris Jericho. Oh my God, Chris Jericho, this is not the kind of guy who would say something that could potentially piss people off, and MVP clearly was not having it that day. Honestly, this story makes this picture even more iconic. I think it's safe to say that MVP probably was not invited on that cruise again after this incident ever again, most likely. Staying on the topic of AEW, Jeff Hardy recently expressed some frustration with his role with the company. On an IG post, he said this, we the Hardys will not be appearing on this live show called AEW Dynamite. We the Hardys are stuck in the dimension of AEW Rampage. The Hardy boys haven't lived up to the hype they once had with All Elite Wrestling when Jeff Hardy first came to the company. But to also be fair, they haven't been that great in the ring. The tag team is a lot older and their time may have passed. With that being said, it'll be interesting to see if Tony Khan will try to use them on AEW Dynamite or if Brian Danielson will just hit them with that fine and tell them to apologize and say they absolutely love aw rampage because that's ryan danison for you now and the last story for today is about aw more specifically it's about sting and his final match at aew revolution as we know the young bucks returned to tv to basically set up that final match and according to fightful it was sting's call to face the young bucks in his retirement match the wrestling observer newsletter followed up on this and said that the young bucks were actually originally going to take some more time off before returning but sting asked them and they were about to turn that down. This is important to talk about because many fans were annoyed with this match thinking that it was Tony Khan's idea and it would have been a lot better to just have Sting and Darby Allen have a singles match. But hey, if this is what Sting wanted, then this is what he wanted and we really can't complain. He knows what's best for his last match. It is funny though because Ric Flair is trying to get some spots in that match. Playful said this about the Nature Boy. Ric Flair has not been considered for any in-ring performing in AEW, but he's been actively pushing to do more physical spots. Let's hope that Ric Flair stays out of that ring because I really don't want to see this guy taking any bumps. He is far too old. So hopefully Ric Flair just stays out of that ring. All right. Anyways, that is it for the video, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. And I'll see you all in the next video.